session. We will find the lecture slides for today's uh, topic, that is research types. Now, before we begin, these are what we call generic research types. Eh? Now, some of you may not understand what that word means, and it's important we understand what that word means. So I'm just going to request one of you to go on Google. I'm going to ask uh, Muhammad, if you can go on Google, just quickly Google what the term generic means as I begin to share my screen. Can you all now see my screen? Yes, yes madam. madam. Okay. So I'm just going to request, uh, I've asked Mohammed if you can just quickly Google, see what the term generic means. Generic means characteristic also relating to a class or group of things, not specific. Yeah, thank you for that, Mohammed. So in other words, what we're saying is these research types are not specific. You will be more specific with your research, but this your research will more or less fall under any of these research types. Eh? So we are going to begin with the first research type, which is basic basic um, research. So I'm just going to ask somebody in our class, um, I'm going to ask Henry. Henry, can you just quickly Google and find out what basic research is? And Jovia, could you please just also Google and find out what applied research is? If you're shy, you can put your response in the chat room. If you're not, you can please speak up. Uh, Jovia, um, Jovia was requesting, I had requested, I think, Henry to tell us what uh, basic research is, and I've requested Jovia to just quickly go to Google and find out what applied research is. Applied research. So in other words, uh, for Henry, just tell us what basic research is, this one that I'm uh, highlighting. And then Jovia, just tell us, let us know what applied research is. Madam, yes, please. I'm having a problem with microphone. With my microphone, let me use this one of this end. Okay, that is no problem. Okay, basic research is also called pure research or fundamental research. Okay, it's a type of scientific research with the aim of improving scientific theories for better understanding and predictions of natural or other phenomenon. Okay. Thank you, Henry. Thank yes. you for, for that detailed description of what basic research is. Jovia, any 
Have you found anything? Yes. Applied research refers to scientific study and research that seeks to solve practical problems. Okay, thank you so much. Now, these are the two overarching research types. And these, these that you see at the bottom here, descriptive, analytical, quantitative, quantitative, and conceptual empirical fall under these. And also these ones that you see here, this subset are also generic in nature, yeah? But thank you that for the two of you for that, that good um, uh, response. Now, basic research is pure research or it's mostly research that whose purpose is to expand our knowledge, expand our knowledge on things. Eh? Um, uh, the best example I can give you is Darwin's uh, theory on evolution. Have you, has any of you heard about Darwin's uh, theory on evolution? Not really. Okay, I'm going to ask Tony to just go go to go on Google and just Google it and find out what Darwin's theory of evolution is. Hey, Madam, I Google Darwin's theory Darwin's, of evolution. Is, yeah, Darwin, Darwin is D A R W I N. Or you can just put the theory of evolution. Actually, Madam, I'm seeing different books mm -hmm. uh, that indicate that indicate how species came to live to a living. Okay, thank you, thank you for that, Tony. Basically, Darwin um, observed the, the, the observed nature, observed the environment, and he came to the conclusion that species, all species, be plants, life, animal life, um, animal including us human beings, we evolve over time to adopt to our environment. So for example, um, like me, myself, I'm in Toro, I'm in Toro in uh, the region of Toro. I, I don't think there were Toro who lived here a hundred years, ago, maybe um, 500 years ago. Are, are exactly like me. Uh, we have evolved over time to suit the environment. Our bodies evolve over time. Um, I know, for example, that the Japanese of today are much taller than the Japanese that were there 100 or 200 or 300 years ago, simply because that the, 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 the eating habits of the Japanese has changed. Their cult, certain cultural practices, for example, the way they sit has changed. So now you find the Japanese of today are growing taller than, than the previous that were there. So that is Darwin's theory of evolution. Yeah, so that's a typical example of basic research, which is there for the sake of knowledge. Now, when you are seated in juxtaposition of applied research, applied research looks at solving practical problems yeah where do we how can we differentiate this in, in everyday life yeah we know darwin's theory applies to all of us all human beings all plant life all animal life 
um, every day as I move around doing my the things I do, um, I am not necessarily, I'm, I'm, I'm not thinking about the theory of evolution, although it affects me, but in real life, it's not a, it doesn't help me solve my everyday problems of life. Applied research is different because this one is designed to solve practical problems. Yeah, solving, and this is also where IT sometimes very much falls in, in that kind of research because IT is there to solve everyday life problems. An example I can also give you is um, an article I read this week, I think it was on Monday or something. I don't know if any of you followed the news about a Catholic priest, a father Matovu, I think it's Fred Matovu, who is carrying out some groundbreaking research in the field of HIV. Have any of you heard about it? He's at Makere University. He's doing his PhD at Makere University. Has any of you heard about his groundbreaking research? No. Okay. Um, Father Matovu, you can also just Google it and find out. Father Matovu is, um, is, he has discovered that it is possible to treat the HIV virus using radiotherapy. Now, radiotherapy is normally used to treat cancer cells. Uh, but now his, 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 his research is proving that it is possible to also kill the HIV virus using radiotherapy. So that is, that is a typical kind of research that solves a practical problem, yeah? So those are the two overarching types of research. Research can be basic, research can be applied. Now, all other research falls under these two. Now, the, the next type of research are descriptive, whether you're doing a theoretical or applied, your research can be descriptive or analytical. So descriptive research is basically, the, as the word gives you, you're, you're trying to describe the state of affairs of a phenomena, the state of affairs of something that exists. Eh? And the term that we're going to meet more over and over again is the term phenomena. Do we know what the term phenomena is? Have we heard about it? Can somebody just quickly Google it and find out what phenomena means? Phenomena is spelled P-H-E-N-O-M-E-N-A. It is a fact or situation that is observed to exist or happen, oh. especially when whose cause or explanation is in question. Oh, thank you, Vincent. Yeah. So basically, a phenomenon is anything that is observable, anything that is observable. So um, I remember last time there was a student who gave an example of students uh, students accessing their past records. That's a phenomena that one can decide to research. Um, somebody can decide to research on the phenomena of um, um, performance, student performance. Another person can decide to research on the phenomena of uh, using IT um, in, in social, in, in, in the, the, sorry, the, the for example, the social media, the social, um, what do we call it? The social media platforms, eh? that phenomena, somebody trying to observe that. So it's anything that we're trying to study. 
and anything that we're trying, we're trying to study. So let's say when we're, if we're doing descriptive research, someone would say, I'm going to try and provide a description on a specific phenomena, yeah? So, um, and, and when we say observe, we're trying to provide a description, we're saying something that is basically not controllable, something that is unco that we have no control over. So what do I mean? Let us say somebody says, uh, we want to find out the typical Uganda Matters University student or the typical student that goes to a private university and, and we give a definition of what we mean by private university. We say a university like UCU, UMU, IUIU, um, St. Lawrence, you name it. Eh? That, that type of, we want to, 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 to understand who, who that type of student is. Now, by the time you're going into that means you don't know. We don't know. The academic world doesn't know the typical student. So that means you're going to describe maybe the age group, uh, the type of students that go there. Are they part-time? Are they full-time? Are they single? Are they married? What's the age group? How many are men? How many are female? You're basically giving a generic a, a description. So, and, and in other words, we're basically saying we don't know what these people look like, this type of student that goes to a private university. And then another one says, I'll do also a description of public universities. What type of student goes to a public university? Uh, what is the economic background of either? Um, are, are these people re religiously tied? Do, do, uh, are they, is it more the case that if you're, you come from a strong religious background? So basically, you're, you're trying to provide a description. And when we say there is no control over that, I would like to give you an example of the opposite, the very opposite of research that has a, a great deal of control. I gave you an article the other week uh, on multitasking. Uh, that is a typical type of research where there is heavy control. Experimental research is where we have heavy control, where we say we are putting people in this particular environment and we want to see that behavior. We want to see the, 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 the effect of this variable on that variable. But in this case, when we're saying we're going to describe, it means we're just going to understand what variables exist. So there is absolutely no control in this type of research. So the researcher is basically coming out to report on what happened on what is happening. We don't know what happens. There's no prediction. We don't know what is coming out of it. Now, the very opposite is analytical research. The very opposite is when we do know the facts, but we want to be analytical, to be critical about it, mm? be critical. So we, the, the typical is the, the, the article I gave you last week, eh, where the, the, the researchers were saying, in multitasking researchers were saying, yes, we do know that there is um, a hedonic experience people do enjoy. That's why they pick to do this thing. But we want to find out to what extent. So you're being even more critical as you evaluate eh, what it is you're trying. You're trying to to get uh, to get a, a much deeper understanding. That that's analytical research. Other times you can find the let's say people um, um, the, in, uh, in in theoretical research when people are saying there's this theory and that theory, but we want to analyze the two one against the other yeah so that that is kind that is anal analytical research then we come to the second type quantitative and qualitative can uh, can we have one person looking at quant what quantitative research is and the other one what qualitative research is maybe muhammad and vicent Muhammad can look at quantitative and Vicent quantitative, qualitative. Just quickly Google those two. Thank you. 
Pardon, madam. Um, let's just look at what quantitative research is. And Tony has already given us qualitative scientific method of observation to gather non-numerical data. That's very good. So Mohammed, just look at quantitative research. What is quantitative research or quantitative data? Quantitative oh. research is the process of collecting and analyzing numerical data. Quantitative mm -hmm. research is the process of collecting and analyzing numerical data. Numerical data. Thank you, Mohammed. So these are also another type of very two distinctive types of research. Quantitative looks at numerical data. So a, a typical example is the article we looked at multitasking where they were looking at, they, they had different subjects and they were seeing as they do this, how many of them had an increased feeling of, of happiness, how many did not. So that is numerical. Uh, you're, you're going to give your answer based on the number of. Yeah, so an, another type of, I could give another type of example is let's say a, a, a IT student develops a system and uh, tries to find out if it's usable or not, and then tries to, get a number of users to use the system and then get their opinion. The number that say it is useful or usable, that, that means that system we can say is useful. So that is quantitative data. Qualitative data on the other hand seeks to, to get what we refer to as in the, in the morning class, somebody said it seeks to get a holistic understanding, a total understanding, not based on numbers. And here we look at research problems that seek to understand, seek to, to get a deeper meaning towards something, yeah? So I, I can give you, I'll just give you an example from the social sciences side. Many of you have heard about female genital mutilation or female circumcision, yeah? Has anyone heard about it? Is there anyone who doesn't know what uh, FGM means? Female. Pardon? Sorry, Henry. You've heard about it. You've heard about it. Is there anyone who has not heard about it? No, I'm assuming all have heard. Eh? So basically, it involves the uh, mutilation. Basically, it's, it's a very, a very, a very inhuman act, a very, very inhuman act, and uh, um, it's, it's, it is something that internationally has been outlawed. Uganda, like so many countries, have enacted laws against female genital mutilation. But the surprising thing is that many times this act which is against women, it's usually women who perpetrate it. In other words, it is a mother, like imagine if I have a child, it is me who would take my child willingly, my very young child, even as young as six years old, three, six years old, to have her genital areas severely mutilated. It's painful and it causes long-term health problems for women when they come into their reproductive years. It's very, very, it causes a great deal of pain when a woman is experiencing um, menstrual periods or giving birth. So it's a very, very inhuman act. But the surprising thing, in spite of the laws, in spite of the sensitizations, we have women taking their young children, their young daughters, and we even have adult women taking themselves to be circumcised. So researchers decided to try and find out why. So this type of research question requires somebody to truly get into a situation to try and understand why people are doing what they're doing. And it requires someone to take time 
within a society, within a community to find out why. And you simply can't hand over a, a questionnaire. Somebody needs to spend even a year, two years, hmm, trying to find out why. In the field of IT or in the field of ICT, first of all, I want to ask everyone, do we know the field of, have you heard of the field of ICT 4D? Have we heard about the field of ICT 4D? Kunrad, you've just joined us. Maybe you could quick, quickly Google and tell us what, the, what ICT 4D means. Yes, madam, I, I see what? ICT 4D. ICT, then the letter four, the number four and D. Uh, Madam, what I see mm. is information and communication technology for development. Okay, thank you. It is essentially when you get ICTs and implement them in a situation of development where there is need to uh, bring about development, a situation where there's underdevelopment and we want to bring about development. So an example would be if you get a rural healthcare facility, and you, you use a computer, you implement a computer, maybe to help record keeping. Um, another situation is if you get a mobile phone and you try to use it to help uh, people who are underprivileged to access info healthcare information, that kind of thing. Now, in one particular case, we, I was reading about where they use qualitative research. There was a village community where uh, development practitioners came and implemented a community radio station with the intention of um, disseminating market information for different agricultural produce, produce. So imagine a radio station which is letting farmers know what the coffee prices are on the market, what the prices may be of um, toke, is and that kind of thing. So this, com this development practitioners came and put up that radio station and then went ahead and also implemented um, loudspeakers in the community. So let's say they'd put a loudspeaker in the marketplace or in, uh, in some shop, shopping area or something like that. So that whatever is, whoever doesn't have a radio also can receive that information. Now, after a certain period, the practitioners came back to try and evaluate and they found that the people had vandalized the, 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 the speakers that spoiled them. So they were trying to find out who did it. Then they were, of course, the first initial findings were saying that, oh, there were some bad elements who came in the community and, and vandalized. But then later on with time, when they spent more time in the community, they found out the community members themselves are the ones who vandalized them. Reason being, they got fed up of constantly being told about market prices. They were saying that we shouldn't only hear about market prices. Maybe let's hear about football. Yeah, the latest match between Man U and Arsenal, or Chelsea and Liverpool, that kind of thing. Those who listen to, those who like these local soaps, eh? you know, like uh, there are these soaps on NTV and, uh, and NBS and so on and so forth. They wanted updates on that. Eh? So, so that, but that kind of information they found it by spending time with the community to understand certain things. They couldn't have gotten that kind of information from a questionnaire. So that is qualitative research in a nutshell. The difference between qualitative and quantitative research. The third kind is conceptual research and empirical 
research. So conceptual research very much falls, it's very much leaning towards basic research. It deals with ideas and theories. That's what the word concept means, an idea. Yeah, you're, you're, you're researching on existing ideas and explaining events. That is conceptual research. Empirical research is the kind of research which is testing facts. We are looking at testing hypotheses, um, gathering ev empirical ev evidence, yeah? So hypothesis is typically the quantitative kind of research where you, you're count, you're testing a theory. Uh, 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 the perfect example I'll give you is the, uh, the multitasking example I gave you. That, is, that was an example that was testing theory. Even in qualitative research, we can also have empirical research. For example, um, that those, those development practitioners who went back into the community to find out if if uh, a solution that implemented worked and why it didn't work, that also is empirical research. It deals with facts, yeah, investigating facts. Now. I'm going to give you points for discussion. I also gave them, gave it to the first class, the morning class, and I'm going to put up a discussion forum on Moodle. Can you give me some examples of these kinds of research? Can you go search on the internet and find some research and then classify them? There may be one or two and just explain it. Then look at the university context, identify areas where you may do research. For instance, I would look at the mobile phone using mobile phone use in teaching and learning. Many of you right now are maybe listening to me via a, a, a smartphone. Others may be using a tablet. Others are using a, a, a laptop. Others are using a university device. Others are sharing devices. So look at areas where you can possibly do research. What would you examine and where would you classify your research? Let's just have that discussion on Moodle. Yeah. Any questions so far before we end the lecture? A lot of silence mean consent. Yes. Okay, okay. So um, I'm going to do this. We still have two more topics to cover to understand the nature of research. And that is the philosophy of research and research methods. So for the philosophy of research, I'm going to upload a pre-recorded video this week. And then we shall have a discussion of this the following week. Then we shall look at research methods. Then I'll give you your first assignment on the nature of research, identifying basic research components in a type in a research, in a in a in a published article. So um, if you don't have anything else, I'm going to stop the lecture, I'll stop the recording. <laughs>